This is amazing. Hello, Wonder Hussy here. You know, people often ask me when I'm rolling around solo in the middle of nowhere, do I carry protection? As we all know, the wilderness is the most dangerous place to be, far more dangerous than the city. Meth heads in every abandoned cabin, serial killers lurking behind every pine tree, and well, let's not even talk about Bigfoot. So I thought today might be a good time to address that issue, since I am traveling around solo, exploring the extremely remote backcountry of far Northern California, which as we all know, is infested with killer hippies running illicit marijuana grow operations. So a gal better not run around half cocked out here. A gal better be armed, and I am. I got a weapon right here tucked into my waistband. Go ahead. Make my day. <laughs> That's right. Today I'm armed with my infrared thermometer because I'm scouting another hot spring. That's right. I'm all the way up in far northern California, almost at the Nevada border, almost at the Oregon border, up in that mysterious and wild corner of California that hardly anyone visits except murderous hippies running illicit grow operations and people looking for hot springs. So this particular hot spring is located on the banks of a reservoir in a beautiful pine forest, undoubtedly infested with murderous hippies running illicit marijuana grow operations down a rutted, muddy dirt road. And when I say rutted, it was rutted. It actually wasn't muddy today. I don't think it's rained in a while. I'm here on June 17th, so it's pretty dry, but I don't think you'd want to try to come down here in the rainy season. There were some pretty significant ruts and bumps and you would definitely want high clearance and four wheel drive to get down here. Anyway, the road kind of ended or petered out here in this beautiful little meadow dotted with beautiful yellow wildflowers. And well, there's this mysterious tin shack just beyond that fence. And I'm pretty sure that's the hot spring. At least according to my hot springs guidebook that I go by, my hot springs bible, hot springs and hot pools of the southwest. There's another volume called hot springs and hot pools of the northwest. But since I'm in California, that's in the southwestern edition, even though I'm in far northern California. Anyway, according to the book, this little shack houses the hot spring, and it was supposedly built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Well, that's what the book says. I didn't know the Civilian Conservation Corps did cool stuff like build shacks over hot springs, but well, I can see where that shack would actually be very handy because it's windy. I mean, it's June 17th in California and it's chilly. It's windy, you know, to get out of the wind would be nice and to sit in a hot spring out of the wind would be even nicer. So you could see there was this barbed wire fence. Uh, I'm not sure what that was for because it ends right here. And obviously you're not prohibited from going over to this hot spring. There's a decently well-trodden path. I don't know if this hot spring is that frequently visited. I haven't seen any litter on the ground. Um, well, let's just see if it's any good and maybe that'll explain why nobody goes here. Okay, so it looks like there's a little creek running from the hot spring out. I guess maybe it peters out in that reservoir. What a beautiful reservoir, by the way. Plenty of awesome places to camp around here. Uh, I'll be spending the night somewhere in this vicinity tonight. There were actually a couple of campsites right here by the hot spring with fire rings, you know, like uh, I like to camp at a pre-existing spot, a previously disturbed spot, I think is what they say, just so that I don't, you know, go bushwhacking and mess up a pristine natural site. But I don't think I'd want to camp right here by the hot spring, especially because it's a Friday and well, some people might come down here along this long, bumpy, rutted dirt road to party and well, I want peace. With that in mind, I better explore this hot spring quick before anybody shows up. Okay, before we go in the little shelter, let's check the temperature of this little creek. This is the outflow from the hot spring. And according to the book, this is a really hot hot spring, but well, the more I use that book, the more I find that a lot of it's out of date. So, oh, this is, oh, this is Celsius, duh. 87 degrees, uh, I don't know. 
Let's go up and check out the quote unquote hot spring. Maybe it's not so hot after all. Okay, this is really cool. It's a little uh, wooden shack with this tin roof. Look at that, and it's in really good shape. Nice tin roof, solidly built little shack. We'll just go ahead and step in. Uh, there's a little waterfall coming out of it leading down into that creek. Whoa, <laughs> rocks a wobbly, be careful. And then the floor in this shack is very solid. Oh, well, there's a little bit of litter. There's one Sierra Mist can in here and a tennis ball. Other than that, though, it's really clean around here. Like I said, I haven't seen any litter. Um, I guess that's just because it's so remote and so hard to get to. And let's see, out the back door of the shack, it looks like there's more little streams. Oh, this must be the source that's running into the shack. Oh, so wouldn't you think like, oh, I'll bet you anything. This is the source pool. Look at it. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at that leathery algae in there. Well, first, let me see how hot the water is. 91. Oh, not too bad. I mean, that's actually not even hot enough for me to soak in, but I just wanted to make sure I could put my hand in. I don't know. That feels good, actually. Look at this. Oh my God. This algae is amazing. Oh, I can't even grab it. It's just so thick and oh wow it feels like um i'm not sure it sort of feels like strips of fat maybe real squishy Blah. oh my god this water is exactly the right temperature though i think it's in the 60s today about 66 according to my car so it's a nice day it's just you know got a little chill breeze so to be honest wallowing in this puddle of leathery algae fat strips would probably be would probably feel good temperature wise i don't know like tactile wise it might be a little skeevy well let's go inside let's stop beating around the bush and go inside the little shack and try out the actual hot pool okay going into the shack i also noticed there's a whole roll of barbed wire over there i guess that's to maintain that fence I mean, maybe that's supposed to keep cattle out i don't know if this is open rangeland or what Oh, look, there's a fire ring right there, too. So you could camp literally right by the hot spring if you wanted to. Interestingly, too, I noticed there's, there's like, this creek is feeding in from somewhere up there. Let's see how hot this creek is. Whoa, this one's 109, 110. Okay, this is the hot one. Okay, now I have an idea of what's going on. This little hot creek is coming from somewhere up there in the meadow, and I'll go investigate and see if I can find the source source. This is just sort of a side pool. Which, man, if you came out here with a shovel and did a little bit of work, that could be very nice to soak in. But maybe there's no need. Maybe the one in this shack is going to be so good, there's no reason to dig another pool. I guess I'm kind of putting off testing this one because I'm afraid it's not going to be hot enough and I really want to go for a soak. Let's see. Uh, it's saying 89.90, which normally is nowhere near warm enough for me to soak, especially on a day that's kind of chilly. But I drove all the way out here by gum. And the last hot spring I went to, I couldn't soak in because it was supposedly contaminated with E. coli and cholera. And my friend went in because he wasn't afraid. Uh, and I had to sit there watching him soak yesterday. Well, by golly, I guess I'm still sore about that. And so I'm getting in this hot spring 90 degrees or no. You know what, though? I better go get my bathrobe first because <laughs> if it's only 90 degrees... <laughs> I'm going to want something cozy to put on when I get out. I didn't bring my robe with me because I wasn't sure this spring was even going to be soakable. Again, according to the guidebook, which is admittedly out of date in many instances, while this spring was maybe too hot to soak in or needed some work or this or that, or I don't know, I wasn't sure. So I didn't bring my robe with me because I don't want to jinx it. But now that I know, well, I'm going to go get my robe and a drink. Oh, it's actually way hotter. I think that thermometer, there must be something wrong with it because this is way hotter than 91. And it's very clear. There's a cement bottom. This is a cement tub, I guess, but it's, well, it's wooden boards down here, which you can see various hippies over the years have carved their names and initials into. I'm impressed though. There's not a lot of stupid graffiti. Like I said, there's no litter. Um, the only thing here that I saw is this weird little, well, there's a couple things here that are actually, I think, really cool. I think this is an incense box, and it has some tea lights in it with a lighter, so you could have candlelight. And there's a little fishing lure 
if you want to go fishing in the reservoir after. And then this looks like one of those little LED glow lights. Golly, who needs that cheap made in China junk when you have your own all natural psychedelic light show using just the sunshine and the water. It's not a very deep tub. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting on the concrete floor right now. I'm 5'3", so and the water comes up to my collarbone, basically. What is that, maybe mm, two and a half feet? Uh, and it's not that big of a tub. I'd say, well, depending on your level of comfort, probably for a four-person tub max. You know, probably really good for just two people. And guess what? <laughs> it's even better with just one. Hi! I got it all to myself. Uh, while I'm sitting here soaking, here's some more graffiti. Looks like Kava was here. Vern, hey Vern. Mac, Alex, and Levi. Oh, I wonder if they were a couple. Honey. You know, the nice thing about this is, I think it's only about three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it's a Friday, but it's still early. So I should have at least a couple hours to soak in this hot spring all to myself before I roll on and look for a place to camp. Cheers. Best thing about this hot spring is that I have 4G cell signal. I know, people are probably laughing at me. Oh, you're in such a beautiful natural environment. Shut off, get off the grid. Oh, well, I've been off the grid for like two weeks and I need to catch up on my email. So I've just been sitting in this little soaking shack for gosh, two hours now. And nobody has showed up. My rig is still all alone over there. Um, gosh, maybe I should just camp here tonight. You know, it's five o'clock now. I can't imagine that people are gonna roll in any later than this. And even if they do, well, I'll pull over. Maybe I will just go to that campsite. There was a campsite right next to where I parked, kind of tucked back in those rocks. And then that way I'll be sheltered from the wind and well, hopefully anybody who does come down here won't mess with me. Before I get out though, just let me look at the, uh, the way this spring works, it looks like, so there's that hot creek coming in from the meadow up above. And I guess it flows in down here and comes out right here through this hole. There's a channel going right under this board and that's what's filling this amazing pool. Oh gosh, and something else I just noticed, you can actually move this block. So if you wanted to, I guess, stop hot water from coming in so that it, the temperature would cool down if it was too hot for you, or if it wasn't warm enough, I guess you could just move the block altogether and even more hot water would come in. Yeah, you can feel it coming in. It is getting hotter. I'm gonna put it back, I guess, kind of the way it was when I got here. Okay, I got my robe on and I'm gonna need it because it is windy and chilly. Oh no, somebody's at my car. Now would be the perfect time to get out my infrared gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cows. I guess this is open rangeland and that's why that fences around this hot spring so they don't come in and trample and poop in the creek. Uh, I don't get it though because the fence ends. Like what's stopping the cows from just going around the fence? Hey, what do I know? Anyway, before I go up and move my car someplace to camp, I thought it might be fun to go look for the source of this hot creek. Okay, remember there's that little hot creek that's like 109, 110 degrees that flows into that shed there. But before it reaches the shed, it also branches off and fills that kind of mucky little pool but it comes from farther up the meadow. See if we can see anything interesting up here. Man, if you've never walked through a meadow on a windy day wearing a bathrobe, you haven't lived. Okay, yeah, it does look like it comes out of some little source pool up here. It's real muddy and boggy though, and I'm afraid to go closer to it because I don't want to burn myself. You know, what if it's real hot? What if my foot falls through the muck and I, scaled myself. Well, I'm guessing that pond there in the distance, that must be the source, because I don't know if you can tell, but there is steam coming off of it, even in this wind. So that's probably pretty hot. Unfortunately, I don't feel safe going close enough to it to uh, use my thermometer gun 
and measure the temperature. Oh, so I'm just gonna try to get back to terra firma <laughs> and it'll just have to be a mystery. Let's just call it hot. Woo, man, it is really cold with this wind. I can see why they built those walls around that hot spring. You need them. I mean, even as hot as the water was, well, it wouldn't be that hot with the wind blowing the steam off it like it was that pond out there. And also actually having the ceiling on it helps us so there's no algae in the water. You know, sunshine is what creates algae on these hot springs. And so because it's covered, well, there's no algae on the water. And because it's surrounded by walls, it's nice and toasty. And it looks like this hot spring is actually very well maintained. There's some newer OSB nailed on the side of the wall there. And actually a few rolls of barbed wire laid in. So I don't know, I guess there must be locals. There's not really, any, not too many towns in this area, but there must be some kind of locals who come out here and uh, take care of this hot spring. So if you guys happen to be watching, thank you. Uh-oh, look at that. Mama cow and two babies figured out how to get around the fence. They could totally go mess up the hot spring. Oh my gosh, here comes the whole herd. Oh, look at the little black baby though. They're so cute. How could I be mad at them? Even if they do crap all over in the hot spring. Golly, what a beautiful place to be a cow. Isn't that what the commercials used to say? Happy cows come from California? Well, <laughs> those look like some pretty happy cows. <laughs> Anyway, I found a place to camp. Uh, instead of camping where I was parked, I came around. There's a bunch of weird little roads here. Uh, I came around just right over here. And well, I tucked myself back in the pines. I wanted a view of this beautiful reservoir, but it is, it's real windy and cold and it's supposed to rain later tonight. I kind of tucked myself back into this little grove of pine trees. I do have a, well, I've got a, a reservoir view and I've got a hot spring view. I'd say I'm sitting pretty for tonight. So I'm making some dinner, which is my usual boil in the bag, rice and beans. Matter of fact, they're probably hot enough now. I should probably turn this off to save gas. Gotta dump these out onto this delicious bed of kale and arugula. <laughs> that was delicious. And there's only one thing better than having a delicious, nutritious dinner, and that's going for a soak in a hot spring afterwards. You can see the wind died down. The cows are peacefully munching grass down by the water's edge. And the lonely little soaking shack is waiting patiently for me. Still haven't seen anyone else roll up to this hot spring, so it looks like I'm gonna have it to myself tonight. Ah, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Good morning. Spent a very peaceful night at this beautiful little hot spring. Tucked in the trees back there. Started raining, oh gosh, sometime around midnight. And it was so cozy to hear the pitter patter of rain on the roof of the car. I slept really well. And then I woke up and it was cold. I think it was like the weather said it was going to be like 38 last night. It was chilly, but I had plenty of blankets. But when I woke up, oh gosh, it was so cozy in my bed. I really didn't want to get up. 
And I thought, oh, it's Saturday. I still want to finish shooting this video. People might show up at this hot spring. I better get up before anyone shows up. And right as I was getting ready to go, I saw a guy walking his dog right past my car. Where'd this guy come from? God damn it. Now I'm not gonna be able to shoot this video. <laughs> All right, well, I kind of waited and he, he walked off towards the reservoir. Oh, well, maybe he's camping somewhere else. Cause I didn't hear any cars come in last night. Then again, I sleep with earplugs. So he was gone. I go, okay, I'm gonna go over to the hot spring. So I loaded up all my gear, walked over here, and there he was. <laughs> and guess what? He's in the hot spring with me right now. How's it going? <laughs> this is Jeff. We're friends now. He's a very cool guy, very understanding, very accommodating of me shooting this video. I appreciate it. And Jeff actually told me something very interesting about his dad. What's up with your dad? My dad loves her and watches every single one of her videos. Jeff Sr. watches all my videos. How about that? Jeff Sr. If you're watching this video right now, hi. hi <laughs> How cool was that? I mean, that's the kind of people you run into at these remote backcountry locations. For a minute there, I thought I was gonna have to pull out my thermometer gun on him. But he turned out to be super cool, and boy is his dad ever gonna be surprised when he sees this video. But it's funny, I was talking to Jeff Jr. about, you know, he saw my car, and I saw his car, and he was warm and cozy in his car, and I was warm and cozy in my car, and he wanted to go soak, but he didn't want to get out. I wanted to go soak, but I didn't want to get out. He was kind of waiting to see if I would go do my soak first, so then he could go do his soak. I was kind of waiting to see what he was gonna do. <laughs> Looks like we were going through the same mental gymnastics, and that just goes to show that no matter where you go, folks are pretty much the same. Anyways, I would love nothing more than to just soak this entire day away in this awesome little soaking shack. Unfortunately, I have work to do. I got videos that need editing, and that means I'm gonna have to go back over and hang out in the back of my car working for the rest of the day. Wah, wah, wah. But if I get all my work done in time, maybe I'll reward myself with another sunset soak here in the fantastic little soak shack in the middle of nowhere.